I'm really excited because today I am talking with Andy Coluccio from Zoom, and we're gonna talk about resolution. I know that this is a really big pain for some people that have this amazing presentation or production, and then they go to show it to people and someone will say, you know what, that's kind of blurry. I can't quite see that. And so we're going to get into Zoom and resolution. And so I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you so much for taking some time to talk about Zoom resolution and what some changes are that are going to be made when it comes to Zoom and what's offered, especially for the single user. If you're not on a business plan or not on an education plan, you've been kind of limited. So can you tell me what's the current status and what are some changes that are coming up? Absolutely, and thanks for having me, Kat. I really appreciate it. Yeah. So uh, today, if you were to set up your Zoom account, you would find that for a free account, the resolution is limited to 360p. If you have a paid pro account, the resolution, you could send in a support ticket and get up to 720p. And then if you had 10 business licenses or higher, you could request 1080p from support and get it enabled for your meetings and your webinars. Yeah. What we're introducing now is the ability to use our Zoom events platform to be able to get 1080p access as well. So if you're that single pro user mm -hmm. who traditionally could send in the ticket to get 720p and you add a Zoom events license, uh, which comes in two flavors, either sessions or the full events platform okay. license, uh, you can then get 1080p access. Uh, no support ticket required. It'll automatically happen on your account. Uh, and we're really excited to roll that out because as we've been discussing, um, having that additional resolution uh, does make a difference in your productions and it helps show your guests in the best quality possible when they come in over Zoom. Yeah, so if someone wants to do this, so they've, so they've got the pro plan, so they've got a paid Zoom account, mm -hmm. and right now maybe they have 720, maybe they haven't actually requested it yet and yep. they're not quite at 720, what is the next step that they have to take in order to have access to that 1080 as an individual? So you're gonna to wanna to add the Zoom events platform to your account. And there's yeah. a couple different ways that you can do that. Um, if you look at the pricing page, there's different types of models that you can purchase on. Mm -hmm. And they have, uh, they're basically based around attendee capacity. Um, so if you were gonna do an event with you know, 100 people, you could buy the 100 person license. But the important thing for people to understand is that that ticketing platform doesn't actually have bearing on access to this resolution policy. You just need to be using a subscription license. Okay. So if you have, let's say, a Zoom uh, Sessions 100 annual subscription license, you add that onto your pro account, that's gonna be a really cost-effective way of getting 1080p access across your entire account uh, without uh, worrying about how many you know, things you're doing on the ticketing platform, so yeah. to speak. And even though it's called sessions and events, it can be used for any meeting that you have on Zoom. It's sort of just once you've got it added on, that 1080 will work with no matter what type of meeting, event. And does it work with webinars as well? It does, yeah. So I would think about it like this. The Zoom events platform is sort of a wrapper around meetings and webinars, okay. and it adds features like paid ticketing, uh, email marketing, uh, building a customized website for your event, mm -hmm. hosting videos after the event, and getting analytics about your audience. Um, so the platform can be helpful uh, mm -hmm. if you're going to use it for that. Yeah. But if you just need to bring in a remote guest into a meeting and you're going to do something with a production tool, uh, then it's fine to host the meeting outside of the events platform. And you'll still see that group HD setting in your web portal that you can turn on for 1080p after you purchase that uh, events platform license, which again can be either Zoom sessions or Zoom events. Okay, so if you buy either of those, then you have access to the 1080 once that's enabled. You don't have to submit a support ticket, right? That's, that's right, and okay. you, don't, you don't have to host the event inside of our platform either. You can have a standalone meeting outside of Zoom events and yeah. it will still work there. Okay, and just because we are talking about it, what are some of the advantages? You mentioned ticketing. What are some other features that people might wanna know if they're getting it for resolution, but what else are they getting when it comes to sessions or the events? Absolutely, so there's a lot of things that come with it, mm -hmm. and as, as we know, uh, the production is is the central piece. It's yeah. maybe the most important piece, but there are so many things that go into producing an event that happen both before and after. Yeah. So the Zoom events platform looks at the full event life cycle from the pre-event section where you're planning. Maybe you have to do some scheduling uh, to get your guests together. Uh, maybe you're building a website where you're gonna feature your different speakers and give more information ahead of time, conduct some email marketing or even paid ticketing. And then you get into the event and that's where the production tools come in. So we have our own uh, session branding, which includes our production studio product, which is a software based video switcher uh, that anybody can use. It's, it doesn't require a lot of technical expertise to pull it off. Uh, but you can also sub in some production tools from third parties as well. Okay. So Ecamm, vMix, Wirecast, Mimo Live, all these products have integrated Zoom directly through our developer platform. Okay. And so you can call them into these tools and, and actually produce uh, with professional products. 
uh, if, if you so choose to, but you're not required to. Yeah. And then after the event, you get analytics uh, and you have the ability to stay in constant contact with that audience. Okay. Uh, you can also host videos um, from your event and make them available for your attendees oh. to watch as video on demand later as well. Oh, so this could also be a place you have the replay for your events that you've hosted. Absolutely. It's yeah. there for the full life cycle from the pre-event planning to the in-event production mm -hmm. and then the uh, artifacts that come yeah. after that event as well. Yeah. And did I also hear you say when, because uh, you were talking about this earlier at this event, that there's also a, a mobile app that participants can have. Is that right? Do you want That's to talk right. So if you're doing that? a hybrid event where you're going to have on-site attendees and remote attendees connecting in over yeah. Zoom, one of the challenges that we saw when we were hosting our own events was that the people in the room had one mechanism to chat, which is raising their hand and saying something, yeah. and the remote attendees would type into Zoom. Um, and we really wanted to unify that audience experience together. So what we did is we created the, um, the mobile app in Zoom okay. that allows you when you're an in-person attendee of a hybrid event to participate in the same chat, Q&A, and oh. polling pool as the remote attendees. Okay. So you can pull out your phone, you can type in a chat message and see the chats from the other participants yeah. who are there remotely and be one unified pool. And that's great for moderators mm -hmm. as well because they have one place to go and look to see all the questions, all the chats, yeah. and everything that's going on in their event. And does that also Will that work for quizzes? So if you have some people in the room and some people on the quiz, they can do that all We have app. polling, you know, so basically the experience as an attendee in person is you walk in, you scan a QR code, and it will launch you into Zoom, and then you have access to all of our asynchronous collaboration tools, yeah. including polls and surveys. Okay. And are there any differences with some of the existing tools that we're already familiar with, like your polls and quizzes? Is there anything different with events, or is it, is it pretty similar that if you've done it before, you'll be able to do it again with the yeah, events? If you're comfortable with like our chat and Q&A, it's a very, very similar experience. Yeah. Again, these, these tools that allow the audience to engage in nonverbal communication mm -hmm. uh, are, are very much the same as, as you've experienced them in meetings. If you're hosting a webinar, you have access to other things as well, like webinar resources, yeah. where let's say you know we're, we're talking about something and we want to make a PDF that we referenced available to our attendees to download. Yeah. You can actually have that document show up as a resource that they can then get access to okay. via Zoom as well. Yeah. yeah, That's awesome. So we've talked a lot about the features for sessions and events. I want to kind of bring it back to resolution, which is one of the, <laughs> the main reasons I wanted to talk to you today. And I'd love to know what are the tips for if you are just getting started with having HD on calls and you've enabled group HD in the settings, what are some things you want to do in order to optimize that? Because my understanding is just because you turn it on doesn't necessarily mean you're sending out HD. So what are some tips for the user who has now enabled it to make sure that you're actually sending your 1080 out there? I think step one is starting with the setup. Make sure that your camera and your lighting uh, puts you in the best position to be able to take advantage of the extra resolution mm -hmm. at your disposal. Uh, make sure that, for example, if you have a capture card, that it's set to the right resolution. Because mm -hmm. if it's set to something like 720, right, Zoom is only going to see it at 720 and won't be able to offer it at 1080. Yeah. So let's make sure the chain is set up first. Okay. Now, if we've got that set, the next step is making sure that your computer and your internet connection are solid. We've documented on our website what our minimum requirements are, but you want to make sure that you have a stable network connection and a powerful enough computer to do the encoding. Most modern computers are going to be fine at this, uh, but the big thing I see people get in trouble with is Wi-Fi. You want to make sure that you get on a wired internet connection because yeah. Wi-Fi isn't really designed for high quality live streaming. It, it, it kind of is a little bit elastic and it doesn't really work for that. So yeah. getting on a wired internet connection would be a good idea. And then um, the video is being uh, made available to Zoom at 1080p, assuming that we've got the account set up correctly. The next step, if you ever opened up your Zoom statistics and took a look there, you might notice that you've done all that work, but it still says, hey, I'm, I'm only sending you know, 90p or 180p. It's not, it's not the full capacity. And that's because Zoom will only ask you to send what somebody is watching for. So let's take an example. Let's say we logged in um, you know, a remote meeting client and we had a 1080p screen, but we had Zoom really small. Maybe we had it in gallery view. Zoom's not going to send 1080p uh, because the only person watching it is watching it at a small size. We're going to save the bandwidth. We're going to optimize. Mm -hmm. But if you logged in Ecamm for Zoom, for example, you joined into the same meeting and you requested that participant programmatically, it's going to ask for that 1080p resolution. You should see it jump right up when they, okay. when they request it. So if you're using a production tool, uh, it will programmatically have access to ask for that high quality. If not, just make the window as large as possible, okay. pin and spotlight to make them as large, occupy as much of the screen as you can, yeah. and that will encourage uh, Zoom to ask for that 1080p. Yeah, definitely spotlight mm -hmm. is so key. Spotlight your video so that it pushes it into speaker view for everyone. And also I think full screen as much as possible. You, if you yeah, can have it take over the full monitor, then that's definitely helpful yeah. as well. 
Are there any other tips for just resolution or just understanding resolution that might help people if they have had some frustrations in the past? Are there things that maybe would be helpful for them to know that you haven't already mentioned? Yeah, I think um, it's important to look at it holistically from a quality perspective, right? Because video quality has a couple of different factors that contribute to it. Resolution is one of them, Mm -hmm. uh, but frame rate is also really important. And that's something that you can keep an eye on as well. You know, make sure that your camera is set to 30 FPS uh, so that Zoom can send all the frames that it's receiving, right? And then also take a look at um, at the bit rate. So we, we talk, it's a little bit technical, but basically the bit rate is how much effort is going into each frame of that video stream. How large is that video frame gonna be? And it's independent of resolution. So keeping an eye on that upload bit rate and making sure that you have enough internet connection to be able to do that. And then not worrying too much about the specific details of frame rate and resolution, but making sure that you're at least transmitting at a high bit rate. Make sure that there's a consistent quality experience. You know, the sharpness will be good, the color fidelity will be better. Those are things to keep in mind when you're setting this up. Yeah. I would also, I think another reminder is that when you're on the call, you can check your stats. Yes. You can go into your settings, click on stats, and see what you're actually sending. Zoom will tell you that while you're on the call. I think that's Exactly. You don't, you don't have to guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. Yeah. That's so exciting. Is there anything else that is, is coming up or about this change that just you want the audience to know? Well, I just want to emphasize that you know Zoom really does care about content creation. Yeah. I think that's one of the things that makes us unique among the unified communications platforms that are available is that we really are invested uh, in these special use cases of Zoom, these vertical use cases, um, and they're really important to us. That's why we you know, invest in Zoom events. That's why we have you know, broadened our resolution mm-hmm. policy. And that's why we work with so many different companies in the industry, uh, whether we're certifying their audio and video devices or building integrations through our developer platform to make sure that you have the best tools possible when you're using Zoom to make that guest uh, the best that they can be in your event. So we, yeah. we really encourage you to take advantage of these things and try it out on your own shows. Yeah. That's amazing. Thank you so much for taking the time. I honestly think that increasing your resolution and having that option, especially as a single plan user, that this is something that can help you to create more professional, engaging, and seamless virtual presentations.